Uh, yes, please do that. Yes, uh, yes. yes. So a very good morning uh, to all of you. Uh, today we have for this particular session, uh, Professor K.K. Agrawal, Professor uh, uh, in University School of Biotechnology, Guru Gobind Singh Indrapasta University, Delhi. He is working as a professor uh, uh, from uh, many years, almost uh, 20 years in uh, university. So he did his PhD in the area of plant biochemistry and bio molecular biology from Delhi University. He has uh, about 20 years of teaching and research experience since uh, 1999 when he had joined Guru Gobind Singh Indrapasta University. Prior to this, he has worked as a research scientist uh, at Center for Environment Management and Degraded System. University of Delhi South Campus. His current area of research includes uh, proteomics, plant insect interaction, protease, protease, protease inhibitor interactions, uh, protein purification, characterization, regulation of enzyme, protein, bioremediation, traditional medicine knowledge. He has been awarded best teacher uh, in the year 2004-05 of GGS uh, IP University. Dr. Agrawal has executed research project funded by AICT. Ministry of Environment and Forest, DRDO, UGC, and he has PIA, co PIA'd many projects. Seven students have been awarded PhD under his supervision, including me. He has guided several MTech and BTech dissertations. Dr. Agrawal has published several research papers in international and national journal of repute. He has been teaching uh, papers on enzyme technology, proteomics, environmental biotechnology. He has been involved in various administrative assignment of university and has been member of various statutory bodies of the university from time to time. So, uh, sir, this was a brief bio of no, you. No, no, no. Good, good, so now good. you can- uh, Yeah, I can start, huh? Start, yes, yes you can share. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sumer, uh, for introducing me, making me aware to the other participants, right? And I must thank and congratulate the B.R. Ambedkar National Institute of Technology, Jalandar, for organizing uh, this conference and inviting me to interact with uh, the young students and other faculty members and has given me an opportunity to tell you, share, share with you people a uh, portion of my research, which we are carrying out at University School of Biotechnology, GGS Indra Prastha University. Uh, this work which I am presenting today is part of the PhD work of one of my students, right? So I acknowledge him, uh, for all the experiments which has been done and the conclusion drawings. So the title of my work is presentation is synergetic effect of plant protease inhibitors is important to control helicoverpa armigera herbivore. So in this um, work, we have shown the uh, use of plant protease inhibitors to control the helicoverpa herbivory that how the plant protease inhibitors can be utilized, can be exploited to use as a control strategy for this insect. See a little bit about the, uh, this helicoverpa is a phytophagous insect, feeds on the plants and uh, belonging to the arthropoda phylum and lepidoptera order and popularly known as a cotton ballworm, but it does not restrict itself to only cottons, right? It is the most notorious till now, uh, the insect. And as per one of the studies done, it has been spreaded over across five different continents. If we see in our Indian continent, it has almost covered the whole of the country and this shading uh, from light to dark orange is the abundance of this protein. And we see in our Indian continent, a uh, lot of portion is the dark orange, suggesting, indicating that it is present in, distributed in a sufficient amount. See, uh, 
it's it's so notorious because it damages has a potential to damage the whole crops and it has been observed that this insect feeds on more than 180 plants and most of them belongs to the crops and and uh, which are uh, spreaded across 47 families only in the indian sub subcontinent which accounts for loss of more than 1000 crores per year it's a serious so it is not only it is not only uh, the damage of crop or economic loss but it also leads to food security issues also so there is a need for controlling this pest lot of efforts has been made earlier various strategies has been developed to uh, control this pest as a integrated pest management where various pesticides are being used, certain bio pesticides in the form of bacteria, viruses, fungi has been suggested, some mechanical or physical methods are being used by trapping the insects, by destroying the pupae, and by, by disturbing the behavior or the mating process of the insects so that the population can be controlled through use of various artificial pheromones and more recently uh, transgenics has been used the toxins from certain microbes uh, very famous uh, the bt uh, cry one ac has been used to control this pest by developing transgenic plants right and uh, another is uh, some effort some work has also been done on using plant protease inhibitors and various secondary metabolites as a control mechanism. But the problem is that instead of all these uh, efforts, this insect has started developing resistance to most of these insecticides which are used. It has shown resistance against the most commonly used pesticides, organophosphates, carbamate, cyclodine, and pyrethroid which are mainly used to control this pest. And the reports have also started coming for the development of its resistance to cry one ac toxin. So that raises a serious concern that what next? What next? Because we, we already know the plant and insect, they uh, show correlation, they develop coordination uh, among their development. So here we suggest uh, that use of plant protease inhibitors can be a promising solution to supplement the existing method. So we are not suggesting the only, it is a supplementing to other methods also, because these protease inhibitors are the natural compounds which are produced by the plants as a defensive mo molecule against the phytophagous insect. This is well known, well characterized that the protease inhibitors are the defensive molecule expressed by the plants against the insects. And these protease inhibitors function by inhibiting the midgut proteases. When the insect eats um, feed on the plant, so they engulf the protease inhibitors also, which inhibit the activity of the gut proteases and thereby making the insect nutrition deficient. And ultimately, the growth and development of pest is highly reduced, it falls sick and dies off. But, and a little bit about that, how uh, plant protease inhibitors uh, work, they, what they do is they, when they enter into the gut, uh, they interact with the, they physically bind to the proteases around its active sites. And once it binds both the molecules, the inhibitors and the proteases undergo slight modifications and to make a further tight binding, so the activity of uh, proteases uh, ceases out. And another benefit of using the uh, protease inhibitors as a control mechanism is that the various families of proteases show conserved active sites. So, uh, for example, in Syrian proteases, because that in the Syrian protease family, there are maybe many different types of Syrian proteases which shows conser conservation at their active site. So one Syrian protease inhibitor may be used for 
many insects which rely on the serine proteases. So that can be additional benefit of using plant protease inhibitors because they may act as a broad range for pest across various genres and families. And uh, this is the in silico uh, idea about how the protease inhibitors interact with the proteases and it has been seen uh, using certain, this was done by my students that the hydrogen bonds and the hydrophobic bonds are the main bonds, main interaction which occurs between the protease and protease inhibitors. And uh, the average interface size of complexes when the proteases interact with the protease inhibitors, the contact, the interface size is also important, which is calculated is 1151 angstrom square. So from these uh, initial observations, we can conclude that interface size in protease, protease in inhibitor complexes is 1151, which is in general smaller compared to the other protein-protein interaction complexes. So that is one advantage. Average number of hydrogen bonds, which are involved is 17, which is higher uh, than other protein-protein complexes where it is nine to 10 generally. And the size of the interface area also correlates uh, with the activity, uh, especially in the cysteine protease inhibitor complexes. And uh, the degree of shape complementarity is also known to play a role in the protease protease inhibitor activity. Okay, so uh, in use of, see, uh, people have earlier tried using the plant protease inhibitors to control this insect. But most of the work has been done on serine protease inhibitors. And that was obvious because we, I'll come to uh, later that uh, the serine protease inhibitors, the serine proteases accounts for the maximum proteases which are present into the insect gut. About 80 to 90% uh, proteases present in the insect is serine proteases. So the efforts were, earlier efforts were made to develop the inhibitors against serine proteases. But the problem is the best result which has been obtained till now is 35% mortality using only the serine protease inhibitor. The reason for that is the once we block the, uh, once we inhibit the serine proteases of the insect, it start expressing other type of proteases, metalloproteases and cysteine proteases and keeps on its <laughs> yeah. So uh, what we thought is uh, to study the protease level expression at various levels of insect development because it is the larval stages which are which feeds on the food which are more dangerous. So these are the experiments which were done in the laboratory and we developed right from the egg to various instars and each instar take depending on the food and the temperature nutrition value take two to two, three days to get converted. And we estimated, extracted and estimated the various protease levels in each instar. And the insect generally uh, involved five to six instars level, one, two, three, fourth, fifth. And before pupae, uh, sometimes it also undergoes or the, the, the uh, stage can be categorized as a late fifth instar, where it prepares itself, where the uh, larvae prepare itself to undergo pupae hibernation uh, period. And we found that, and using the specific, specific substrate for each proteases, we found that uh, see, we started only, we did only uh, for the third, fourth and fifth instar because first instar and two instar were too small to handle, to, to extract proteases from the gut. So we uh, started analyzing from the third instar onwards till the late fifth instar. If we observe that as the progress of the instars from third to fifth, the serine protease level is increased 27, 46, 122. And in the late, in store when uh, the insect has to undergo 
dormant or hibernation period, again, the proteases level is increased. So, and the same is trend is being observed for the third instar, fourth and fifth in case of carboxypeptidase, aminopeptidase, cysteine, and a total uh, protease activity also general, which was done by using a common casein as a substrate. Right. So this suggests that now if you see that uh, among all these, even in the third instar, one is that all the all these proteases uh, level increases as the stage of the larva, and the serine protease amount is much more than other type of proteases, but they are present. They are present into the gut. See, when we send this information for publication, they asked us to show the, show in a reverse way also. So in earlier we showed by assessing the protease activity in the gut, then they ask us to show by inhibiting. For example, if you are reporting 27, uh, units per mg of serine protease, they asked you inhibit the uh, 27, you inhibit the serine protease and see what is left. And then we did it using various uh, synthetic, synthetic chemical inhibitors and uh, the results were more or less same by inhibiting, by inhibiting the particular type of uh, protease and calculating what is left. And uh, the total protease were most active. Uh, at the pH 12, whereas the gut proteases are active uh, from pH 3 to 13, if we see here, uh, showing the best, best activity at pH 12. So it means the insect gut pH is alkaline in nature, and that is in correlation to the literature where the lepidrop tiran insect gut pH is alkaline. Right. We also confirmed the presence of proteases through uh, zymography, zymography, and it also supports our observation that in the third, fourth, and uh, late fifth in star, uh, in the third, fourth, fifth, and late in star, if we see the intensity of bands, because we could not differentiate here which is serine and which is carboxy, but different bands suggest. Uh, the different type of proteases. And if we see here, the fifth in start, late fifth lane, late fifth in start, the intensity of proteases is less as we observed in our in vitro experiments also, uh, the, the protease level has declined. So here we, from these experiments, we concluded that yes, serine protease, cysteine, carboxypeptidase, uh, aminopeptidase, that is metalloproteases, are present in the gut extracts of Helicoverma, Helicoverpa armigera larvae, and the levels of protease activity rose as the larvae grew and were highest in the fifth instar larvae. And for every larval stage, activity levels were highest for serine proteases, followed by carboxypeptidase, aminopeptidase, and cysteine protease. Proteases were active from pH 3 to 13, whereas the maximum activity is at pH 12. So this we uh, published. Now, the purpose is to, now after having the information about the gut proteases, we need to have a natural protease inhibitor, which can be exploited to inhibit the gut proteases. So we screened various host plants and known host plants uh, for the isolation of protease inhibitors. So we selected randomly uh, based on uh, the host plants and the non-host plants, 25 non-host plants and 25 host plants uh, through, through the literature uh, and assess the activity of various uh, protease inhibitors. If we see from this, uh, this carboxypeptidase, this green color carboxypeptidase protease inhibitor activity was maximum in oxalis curcu Corniculata and Vidhania somnifera showed maximum cysteine protease activity. So we picked up these two plants for the isolation of these protease inhibitors. So we purified the carboxypeptidase inhibitor from 
oxalis corniculata and uh, cysteine protease inhibitor from Vidhani somnifera. And BBI, this is the serine protease inhibitor, Bowman Burke inhibitor was purchased from Sigma because we did not purify it. We, the, the people have already shown the effect of serine uh, proteases on the insect. So we want in order to have a synergetic effect of these, uh, we purified these two other proteases also. Carboxy peptidase inhibitor was purified using various methods, conventional methods, ammonium sulfate fractionation, ultrafiltration, and gel permeation chromatography. And we could purify after 28 fold purification of carboxy peptidase inhibitor. And the cysteine protease inhibitor was also purified to 147.9 fold using same techniques. And the purity of these uh, inhibitors, the fractions showing the activity were confirmed on native page where they are showing a single band. Molecular weight of these uh, isolated inhibitors were confirmed on SDS page by running a ladder and uh, carboxypeptidase A inhibitor turned out to be around 17 kilodalton and cysteine protease inhibitor from Vidhania is showed 18.2 kilodalton size. And the mode of inhibition is also that how do they uh, inhibit the uh, proteases and uh, it is observed by plotting Dixon plot. It showed a non-competitive mode of inhibition and the inhibitor constant that is the uh, potency of the inhibitor uh, ranges from 0 0.03 to 0.09 micromoles. And for, again, uh, the cysteine uh, inhibitor also showed non-competitive mode of inhibition and the inhibition constant uh, ranges from 0 0.02 to 0.1 micromole depending upon the concentration and the isolated inhibitors were stable, quite stable, and showed uh, temperature tolerance up to 75 degrees Celsius and beyond that, at 100 degrees, no activity was observed. And the pH tolerance was from pH 2.6 to 10.6, right? And which is desirable because uh, we observed that the gut insect, the best gut pH is alkaline. So our inhibitor should be active under alkaline conditions. Although it has more activity uh, towards the uh, acidic uh, range, but it is sufficiently active in the alkaline pH also. So that is desirable and we ho were hopeful that it might work for in the inhibition of the gut proteases also. <coughs> so once we have the information about the gut proteases and the inhibitors in our hand, we write certain in vitro and in vivo inhibition of gut proteases. And we also checked about the dose, how much uh, the protease inhibitor, the uh, natural protease inhibitor would be sufficient. And we observed that at 0.4 microgram, of uh, the concentration of the inhibitor is sufficient to bring about the complete inhibition of gut proteases. As you see here in the graph, and at 0.2 micrograms, it is uh, somewhere around uh, between 55% uh, to 63% inhibition, suggesting that the inhibitors are quite sufficient even at the low concentration of the protein. Now we perform certain in vivo uh, experiments to study the effect of synthetic inhibitors uh, first on helicoverpa or the pest larvae, right? If we see in the photographs, this is the control where no inhibitor was supplied. See, we reared the in, uh, insect in the laboratory on artificial diet and mixed these inhibitors in the diet, right? Uh, following certain um, references. 
and when the insects were fed on edta which is a uh, metalloprotease metallo uh, protease inhibitor and it has shown some degree of retardation pmsf which is a broad range inhibitor and but when we mix both pmsf and edta it has further shown reduction in the growth and development of the insect so suggesting that the synthetic inhibitors if we inhibit the serine proteases or the midgut proteases it do has the effect on growth and development of the insect and then uh, we tried with the isolated inhibitors the same experiments uh, in vivo effects of protein protease inhibitors on the pest larval weight okay at uh, various days and if we see here uh, the control are uh, the deep uh, green color, right? And if you see here, uh, the, the bottom one where BBI, that is serine protease and uh, cysteine protease and metalloprotease together was given, it has shown the significant reduction in the growth of the insect. So different combinations of inhibitors were given in the diet and studied its effect on the growth and development of the insect. Now you see that uh, the control larvae uh, were taken where no inhibitor was given and when only BBI, the serine protease was given, not much uh, effect was observed except slight uh, decrease in the weight and length, right? And alone VSPI also did not have much effect, but when combination of these three, the serine protease inhibitor, carboxy metalloprotease inhibitor and cysteine protease inhibitor uh, were given to the insect or the insect was fed on these combination of inhibitor, it showed maximum effect on the growth and development and the length of the uh, insect there was suggesting that yes the because if you see uh, the combine because we tried various combinations of inhibitor the serine and cysteine cysteine and metallo only uh, metallo these and the best effect was observed in when we used combination of all the three inhibitors it has shown the maximum reduction or maximum effect by reducing the length and the health of the insect. Uh, we also observed the effect of these inhibitors on the larval period because generally as uh, we saw the insect lifespan involves five to six uh, larval stages, one, two, three, four, five, sometime late fifth or six, depending on the diet and the temperature. So we also wanted to know, does it affect the timings also? Generally it takes two to three days uh, to shift from one larval stage to another larval stage, right? So here also we observed that when a combination of all the three uh, inhibitors were used, the larval stage was, the larval period was maximum. It means it is delaying. It is delaying the growth and development of the insect because unless the insect is fully grown or sufficient or healthy, it will never undergo into the next stage of uh, development. Development. So these results were also in conformity of our hypothesis and the in vitro experiments also. I see the difference because uh, in, in control, it is somewhere around 20 days, whereas when we use combination of all these threes, it is almost doubled. So it means the larva growth is reduced. Weight is, we also have done the weight experiments also. The weight is also reduced. Length is reduced and the period of uh, larvae stage is increased. Pupal period also, because after the fifth instar, 
the insect or the pest undergoes hibernation into a pupa period. And from this pupa, it emerges out as the moth. moth. And it is also seen the pupa period, which is also is reduced because it immediately, because it is, it less, it, it spends less time into the pupa stage and emerges out as a moth. Otherwise it will die. It's a negative effect of And uh, we also studied uh, the effect on the larval mortality, adult emergence, pupil weight, and pupil length combination using different combinations of the protease inhibitors, right? And uh, if we see that in the control, no mort uh, mortality was observed. And uh, these are the number of uh, samples we took. 25 was the number of control where no mortality all turned out into adult 100% when only the BBI is used 80%, 20% is the mortality, VSPI that is 16 protease, 84% and when combination of all these three were used, uh, the emergence was only 56% means that 50% of the larvae died, did not turn out into an adult. Pupae weight is also reduced. If we see among all these things as, the, as compared to the control, it is highly reduced. Length is also reduced. So the point is when combination of all the three protease inhibitor are used, it has maximum deterioration effect on the growth, development, and efficiency of the insect. So we propose that uh, the gut protease profile of Helicoverpa is dynamic, activity levels of serine, cysteine, carboxypeptidase, aminopeptidase keep changing with progression of the instars as we observe the different levels of proteases in different instars, depending on its depending on its uh, energy requirement, the food habit. Though the serine proteases are the dominant protease group, levels of carboxypeptidase are also sig significant. That is why when the initially, uh, the people, when the efforts were made to block the serine proteases as a strategy to control, the insect switches over to other type of uh, proteases to supplement the deficiency of serine proteases and keeps on its job. Non-host plants taken in the study generally expressed higher levels of protease inhibitors than the host plants. And that is also obvious because host plants are mostly uh, the crop plants and they are tempered, routinely pesticides are being sprayed and the non-host plants are on host plants because <coughs> they have to they have to survive uh, the extreme conditions and they have to protect them uh, from the herbivory so they have expressed more level of uh, defensive molecules non host plants oxalis corniculata is a source for so that is what we can uh, isolate it and non host plant vidania somnifera See, these are all medicinal plants also, the source for potent cysteine protease inhibitor. And these both uh, inhibitors are stable in alkaline pH and effective against Helicoverpa armigera gut proteases, which is also alkaline in nature. So in last, based on all these observations in study, we can suggest that the control of uh, this pest Helicoverpa with protease inhibitor is most effective when a combination of serine, cysteine, and metalloprotease inhibitors are used together. I think that is all. Uh, and I acknowledge uh, Lunmin Lal, the, he is my PhD student, and uh, he was my PhD student, and the work which I presented 
is his PhD, part of his PhD work. And most of the experiments are performed by him. Now he's doing mushroom cultivation. And he has not, he has left all protease, protease inhibitor business. Thank you very much. So any any discussion, any query? I'm, uh... Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Oh, they were very good presentations, and uh, uh, now floor is open for.